Hey, what's going on everybody? Today we're going to be doing something a little different again. Um, I finally decided to wire up my basement uh, with Cat 8, so just decided to take you guys along for the ride with me. Um, this has been a long time coming and this is one of my least favorite things to do, so that's why it's taken me so long. But let's go ahead and jump right into it here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to need to tone out all my drops, so here I'm just going to plug in my toner to one of these outlets and if you've never worked with a toner before uh, this is what it looks like it's just a device that'll put tone on the wire and you have another device called the wand which you go to the other end of the cable see which one's making the noise and that's the one you're wanting to uh, go for so I'm doing this pretty much just to label them figure out what's going to what uh, so I know where all my stuff is gonna be so here I am just trying to find that tone on the other end of the cable and actually well here's the tone so I found the cable that I need to, and now I'm just going to stick a label on it. And uh, I'm only doing desktop one through four. Those are the only ports I'm really concerned with. So just attaching this so I know which one it is, so I know which order to terminate it on the patch panel. Now, one of the uh, weird things, well, I guess not really weird, but unattended, unintended <laughs> consequences of using Cat8 is that a toner doesn't really work like it normally would. You can see here I'm having to tone the absolute end of the line where it's broken, and that is because these are so shielded that you can't really pick up the tone just on the outside of the cable. And here was one I wasn't able to find, and actually just found it there. Um, I, I took a little bit longer to find that one because it was already terminated to another patch panel. And now that I found all of my cables, there's actually seven of them. I wasn't going to bore you with the whole thing, but... Here's the back of the patch panel, and you can see you got the T568BA uh, and BA. Uh, we're going to do 568B, so we're only going to be concerned with the B standard labels on the back of the patch panel here. And I'm going to go ahead and speed things up as I terminate these. So I'm just going to remove the outside uh, casing, and you can see with Cat8, it is shielded to hell, so we've got this um, mesh shielding that we're going to get rid of. And each individual pair is actually wrapped in, I'm just going to say, aluminum foil. It's pretty much what it is, is it's a shielding of aluminum foil, so we're going to have to peel that back as well. And this is the reason that the tone does not come through the outside of the jacket uh, when you're actually toning them out. If you've ever toned out Cat5, Cat5e, Cat6, you know that you can find that tone all the way on the outside of the cable, all the way back. It is very hard to actually pick up on that tone with Cat8 for that reason. So here I'm just going to finish up getting rid of all of the shielding. Uh, I am going to keep the ground cable, that's that middle one that I'm just going to wrap around the jacket. Uh, I don't really have anything to terminate that to since the patch panel we're using is really only meant for Cat5. Um, it is not meant for Cat8, but that is the cable I decided to run. And really all I'm going to do is just untwist all of these individual pairs, put them where they need to go, and grab my punch down tool. Now, you will probably want to invest in a punch down tool if you're going to be doing this a lot. Um, here's what it looks like. Yeah, you got a blade on the end of it. There's actually four different blade configurations for this one. Um, it's the one for patch panels where the blade on the outside will cut the wire as soon as it's punched down. So it's very easy to get rid of that excess here. You can uh, kind of see once I've got them punched down, you just kind of wiggle the outside and they will come loose. Uh, this first one's actually <laughs> a little bit harder, but they should just pop off there because that blade will cut the uh, edge of the wire. And we'll just do the same thing for the other side, making sure that we match up the colors to the uh, color code on the inside there. And since we are doing a 568 Bravo standard, we are just using the uh, left side of that key. We're not concerning ourselves with A at all. And just to kind of go back, this is, again, my least favorite thing in networking to do, uh, hence why it took me so long to do it. It's just so tedious, especially if you're using something like Cat8 where you have to peel back all of the different shields. Um, now, by the way, there's the end product there, um, all of them punched down like they should be, and 
and yeah, uh, completely tedious. Um, I, I hate doing this because it's just the same thing over and over again. And you can see I'm just going in, doing the other cable. There's desktop uh, port number two. We're just going to go through the exact same process, removing the outside sleeve. Um, all you really have to do on at least this particular cable is just get a nick in the outside, and you can usually just uh, pull it off by bending it, um, getting rid of all of the shielding, unshielding each individual pair, and punching it down so even the video is a, a little bit boring and tedious but if you've never done this before that's kind of a good a uh, what do you call it um, seeing what you're in for if you are going to terminate your own patch panel or run your own cable through your house now the running the cable part is what I didn't show but I did run this cable myself when all of the walls were uh, not drywalled And I actually ran what I thought was six cables, um, three outlets of two in my living room, uh, but I ended up with seven here. I'm actually not really sure what the seventh cable is for. I should have two for my desktop corner, two for still the desktop, but just a little further away, and two for the TV. But I ended up with seven. I'm not really sure where I ran that seventh one, and I couldn't really tone it out either, so... Now I will say uh, one kind of word of advice if you are going to be doing your own patch panel or especially if you're going to be doing this um, in the future, like if you need to add to the patch panel after it's done, make sure that you leave enough slack in your cables to where you can actually pull the entire panel out like I've done here. So I have actually had to terminate these inside of a rack because I was not able to remove the patch panel without just messing up all the existing connections. So definitely plan ahead, make sure you have enough slack to pull it out because it just makes your life so much easier if you have to make a change or add stuff or take it away or do anything with the patch panel at all. Because trust me, you don't want to be in there trying to do it vertically. Um, I did do my last one like that and it was absolute hell. And we're just coming up on the end here where uh, my camera is actually about to die. But uh, once I have all of them punched down, uh, we'll be able to see the end product here with all of them punched down as they should be. And there they are. There's the seven connections. Hopefully they all work. Um, that's going to be the next step is actually testing them after we get it back into the rack here. So here's what I was talking about with leave yourself enough slack uh, to pull it out. So I'm just kind of shoving the cables back into the rack. I'll worry about cable managing them uh, inside there later. But we'll just get that back in there, put the screws in, and if we ever need to make a change or anything in the future, we can just unscrew that panel, pull it out because we have the cable slack, and pull new cable through or do what we need to do, no problem. And once we have the panel uh, screwed back in there, we can go ahead and label the uh, individual ports. Um, there's many ways to do this. You can use an actual label maker. That's probably the best way to do it, actually. But I'm just writing on the front of it, because why not? Uh, most of them were already labeled from my old house, so a lot of them are wrong. But <laughs> the seven on the end at least will be right. Yeah, once we are done labeling, we can go ahead and start uh, patching them into the switch so that we can see if they work on the other end. Now, what you would usually do, uh, kind of the better way to test this is to actually use a cable tester that'll show you each pair, make sure all pairs are working. Because um, sometimes you can actually, just plugging it straight into the switch, you can have it work, but the entire cable not be good. There could be some bad pairs. Um, it couldn't be 100% correct but would still work. So uh, it's kind of your your prerogative, I guess. Uh, 
I just kind of test with uh, speed test, make sure that that's all good and go from there. But if you do want to test it properly, use an actual cable tester. Um, it'll save you some time later. Also, just a note, if you are doing this uh, in a commercial environment, usually you only test 10% of what you run and the rest of it will just come if it doesn't work. Now, when I plugged into this uh, first port here, the desktop one, actually I did not get an IP address, so I'm just logging into my switch here to see uh, what has gone wrong. Um, what I imagine is that there's probably a VLAN issue because I have multiple VLANs in my network for multiple different things. So my suspicion is that this port is just not configured properly. So the first thing I got to do is I got to find which port I'm actually plugged into. Um, I'm 99% sure I'm on port 12, but I'm just going to go into my port settings, see which one out of those uh, ports that I plugged into are up. And those ports are actually ports 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, and 6. So those are the six ports that we just ran and patched into the switch. And I am seeing port 12 up and all the rest of them are down. So we're definitely plugged into port 12 here since that's the one with link. And that's the one I would expect to have link for this port. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go to the actual VLAN configuration portion of the switch and see what VLANs are on that port. And going down to port VLAN membership, we can see that port 12 is set to VLAN 1 untagged. That's what the UP means. Um, that means that it's untagged and it's the port VLAN ID. So on here, at least for my network, I'm going to need to change that to 13. My uh, uh, actual default LAN is for VLAN 13, not VLAN 1, so as I suspected, that is the issue. I need to change all these ports to be untagged on VLAN 13 instead of number 1. So here I'm just going to go through and reconfigure all of them. And now that I have finished, it looks like a couple of them didn't take, and that's probably because of this stupid Cisco small business switch. I actually hate these things. Um, I probably didn't hit apply on a few of those settings, so that's why those didn't take. Just going to go back in there and uh, configure those right this time. And we should be good to go at this point. Um, since none of these are going to be trunks, I'm not going to configure any tagged VLANs on them. Uh, VLAN 13 is the only one I need on them. So at this point, I can go ahead and save this configuration and test it. And like I said, the only test I'm going to do is a speed test. So, um, oh, actually here you can see I already got an IP. I'm going to just renew DHCP anyway, make sure we pull it again. And I'm going to disable Wi-Fi so that we can do our test properly and hope that it doesn't actually use Wi-Fi. So here, just using a speed test, we can see that we are good. We've got a, we got a good connection and my uh, speed should be 500 down, 500 up. And we are... Mm, pretty close to that. Uh, this is about what I would expect. So I'm going to say that this cable run is good. Now what I could do is I could go around to each run, test each one individually, make sure all of them are good to go. Um, that's, that's probably what I should do. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to test these two that I'm using right now. And as I go to use the others, if they don't work, I'll look into it deeper. Uh, that's just kind of how I like to do it. But yeah, that was pretty much um, all there was for running these cables. I now have access uh, to my actual ports. So hopefully you learned something from this. Hopefully it was interesting. And as always, happy networking.